Good afternoon. My name is Don Klein. I'm a retired pastor. I live in Franklin, Indiana. If you would like to write to me, my email is donc at mountauburnumc.org. We've been looking at 1 Corinthians. Today we're in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter. We're going to go through verse 1 and uh, through verse 8. My question today, is there real unity today? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come, in your com we come in your presence today. We thank you for who you are, just gracious and loving God. Help us, Father, to hear your word and to learn. Help us to, to be obedient to you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Chapter 6 in 1 Corinthians, Paul's talking about lawsuits among believers. If any of you has a dispute with another, dare he take it before the ungodly for judgment instead of before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial matters? See, in Paul's day, Romans allowed the Jews to apply their own law in such matters. Paul seems to be talking about civil matters, not criminal cases, that should be handled by the state. And when he talks about ungodly here, he means unbelievers, not necessary uh, mean these judges are immoral or unjust. He's also saying, here you are bringing up these trivial lawsuits and going to Roman judges. What does that show to the world? Does this show unity and that we love one another or not? See, Christians should watch when they contend with one another for the, we are brethren. We are one in Christ. And Paul believes that the believers are, are fully confident to judge these cases where Christians have claims against each other because they view matters from a godly manner or viewpoint. But see, we also must watch it when we have disagreements among ourselves to the point that we have to go to court? What does that show to the world as far as our belief in Christ and our love for one another? He also talks about here that, do you know that, I'm sorry, and if you are to judge the world, are you not competent to judge trivial matters See, Paul is saying the Lord's people will judge the world as those who share in Christ's reign. You know, Matthew 19, 28, for example, says, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renew, renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And he talks here about judging even the angels. And if we look at Jude 1, uh, chapter 1, verse 6, in the angels who did not keep their proper dwelling, those he has kept in darkness, 
bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. See, if we're gonna reign with Christ, how can we not even be willing to be united as fellow believers? Paul was also talking about, you know, remember the Corinthian church thought they were very wise. And they even much upon your wisdom and knowledge. Is there none among you fit for this office? None that has the wisdom of enough to judge on these differences. In other words, Corinthians were kind of talking out of both sides of their mouth. They said, we're here, we're people of wisdom, but there's nobody to judge disputes among us. I really think also that Paul's showing us that Christians should never engage in lawsuits till all other remedies have been tried in vain. We should look at ways that we can be united. See, once we go into a lawsuit and say, I disagree with this person so much that I need to go to court. This fellow believer Paul says you're completely defeated by greed, retaliation, and hatred instead of practicing unselfishness, forgiveness, and love, even willingness to suffer loss. See, it says here, how much more are the things in this life? Therefore, if you have disputes about such matters, appoint as judges even men of little account in the church. I say this to shame you. Is it possible there's nobody among you wise enough to judge a dispute among believers? But instead, one brother goes to law against another. And this is in front of unbelievers. The very fact that you have lawsuits among you means you have completely de been defeated already. Why not rather be wrong? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you yourself cheat and do wrong, and you do this to your brothers. Are we willing to, You really practice unselfishness and forgiveness in love? Or have we become people of retaliation and hatred and greed, so worried that we will be hurt in some way and it becomes all about us? instead of trying to understand and forgive. We must be concerned about our testimony to the world. That's what Paul's talking about. Who's the church with, we can't even get along with each other without taking people to court to settle disputes. The art ties with mutual love to our brothers and sisters in Christ should be very strong. When you love somebody, they're also willing to forgive them. How quick are we 
to worry so much about ourselves instead of being willing to forgive others. That's what Paul's talking about. He even says, you know, trivial matters. These are not major disputes. Now, let me be honest. If you're going to be part of the family, any family, God's family, you're going to get hurt. It happens. But we also need to be willing to forgive. I don't know. I think it's something we really need to think about today. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us. When we worry so much about our own rights, our own hurts, and our own needs, instead of looking at how much we've been forgiven for. What has happened to our sins on the cross? Help us, Father, to be willing to go to brother and sister in love instead of going to the courts over every little dispute that happens. Help us, Father, to show the world that we are united in Christ instead of divided like the world is. Be with us, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, tomorrow we're going to start on verse 9, and we'll go to the end. Yeah, we'll see how far we get. So you have a great evening. Enjoy this beautiful evening. Be with you tomorrow at 5 o'clock.